Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily create video masks using Elementor and Elementor Pro. In the first example, I'm going to show you how I was able to create this effect right here. I wanted to have the word ocean across the screen and have video playing over the letters. So this is using the free version of Elementor and just using a video mask. Then I'm going to show you how you can create something along these lines where instead of using text, I downloaded this fish uh, SVG image and you can have it where the image is moving and the video is playing inside the image. So this right here is going to be using Elementor Pro as this is a scrolling effect, but you can pull this off right here easily just using Elementor. So let's just jump right into the tutorial. The first thing we need to do is grab the video source and then we want to make sure that we have these assets. So in this case, we want to make sure that we have this word ocean as an SVG image. And then we want to make sure that we can grab this fish as an SVG image as well. So I just went to YouTube and you can see right here, this is just a really long loop of fish, you know, kind of swimming around an aquarium. So if you find, you know, anything on YouTube, you can use that. Um, if you have an image yourself, you can download that and serve it as a self-hosted video, which in some cases might be better um, than using a YouTube video. But in this example, I'm just going to use this video right here on both of these examples. So you can see it's the same video on the two examples. The next thing I needed to do was create the word ocean inside a program like Illustrator or Photoshop. Um, in this case, I want to make sure that the word ocean is in SVG format. So I found that if you're using uh, Illustrator, it's much easier to do this. So as you can see right here, I just have a simple text layer um, using our branded text right here. You just gonna want to make sure that the text is bold. In this case, I just have it as black. And if you never saved an SVG format, it's very easy in Illustrator. You just go to File, Export, Export As. You choose your image. So in this case, I just called it Fish Mask SVG. You want to make sure it says SVG right here. Hit Export. I'll overwrite that one. And these are some of the settings you can change right here. Um, the big one is you want to make sure that you have any sort of font convert to outlines. You want to make sure that's selected. Uh, embed any images. And then you can just keep everything else here default. So once you hit OK, it's going to save that as an SVG image. And that makes it much better than using a PNG or anything along those lines because it's a vector image. So you can see if you zoom in really close, it's not going to get pixelated like a PNG or anything like that. So that's why I recommend anytime you do masking, if you can, always use SVG images. So in the next example, I wanted to have a fish outline right here. So instead of doing this uh, by hand, you can go to a website like Icon Scout or Flat Icon and find a fish that will fit your need. So in this case, um, I just went to one of these fish right here, and I believe it was this one, and you just go hover this, hit SVG, and you can download that. Or Flat Icon, very similar website, and this one's free, and you can just go click on a fish and click SVG right here. So you're going to want to make sure that whatever uh, image or icon you're going to use, it's right here. You can see anywhere where it's solid black, that's where the video is going to come over. And then anything that's white is going to stay. So you can see right here, if I go to our example, that white is right here, transparent, but the black is what's going to show. So like I said, you're going to want to make sure that it's solid. So in this case, if we chose this one, these two, I don't know if that's koi fish or sharks, but that would be fully solid the whole way and it wouldn't show like an eyeball like this. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so now that we have the video source and the two SVG images, we can now go ahead and Elementor and start to create this. So I'm gonna show you how I was able to easily pull this off. So let me go ahead and remove this so I can show you exactly how I was able to do it. So you can see right here, this is just a full width section. I have it as fit to screen, I believe. So if you go right here, I just have the height fit to screen. So in this case, what we need to do is pull in the video widget. So just type in video, click in the video widget right here. And we need to go ahead and copy this URL and paste it into here. So like I said, if you have an image that's self-hosted, you could do that as well. If you go right here, self-hosted. And let's say we want to start this at like 20 seconds because in the beginning, I think they have like an intro. So that's what's good about this widget. You can easily tell it when to start and end. So let's just start at 20 and just keep it there. Now, if you never use the mask uh, feature inside Elementor, it's really easy to get to. You just click under advanced 
and you click on mask. So I believe this appears on pretty much any widget. Um, it's only at the widget level, so masks don't appear at columns or sections or anything like that. So if you click on that, or if you go to a section, you're not going to see the word mask. It's only on these on widgets. So let's go ahead and just click on mask. Click that on, and under shape, um, they have some default ones here. Um, so you can see a triangle, a blob. I, I would feel in most cases you're probably not going to use these. You're going to want to use custom. So that's what you do. You just click on the word custom. And then I already uh, uploaded that uh, ocean SVG image you can see right here. You just click insert media. And that's it. You can see how easy that was to create. Now let me go ahead, hit update, and let me show you a trick that most people probably don't know about. And that is by default, if you have autoplay enabled, the browser might not actually play it. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if you see right here where it says autoplay, you would think that if you click update, the browser would automatically play that video. Now let me go ahead, hit refresh, and show you what's happening. You can see right here, when you have autoplay, nothing's happening. It's forcing you to click on the video. And that is because by default, the modern browsers now, they have it where if a video has audio in it, it will not autoplay. So a lot of people don't know that, and I actually think it's a really good feature because that eliminates any of those annoying websites where you go to and it automatically starts playing loud music. The browsers did this because a lot of people had autoplay on. So what you need to do is go over to this button right here, mute, and turn that on. So if the video does have audio, you need to make sure that mute is on or it's not going to autoplay. So if I go back to the preview website, you can see it's automatically going to play. So it's not where the user's going to have to click. And that was it. That was as easy as it gets when it comes to how to have a text overlay as a video mask, basically. And you can go ahead in here and click loop. You can turn off player controls because if you had a bigger mask, uh, the video controls are still going to be down here. So if you look right here where my mouse is, you can see it's kind of changing things. So if I... So I'm actually interacting with the player controls, but you can't see it. So if you just turn those off, the user's not going to be able to turn those on and off. So let's go ahead, hit update, hit refresh. Let's make sure everything's working correctly. And yeah, you can see if I move my mouse down here, it's not doing anything. So I'm not able to turn on and off the video. Now the user can still go ahead and click in here and click on and off the video. So I guess that is some sort of player interaction, but it doesn't have that play bar down here. Now you can go ahead in here and there are some additional settings. So you can see you have fit, fill. This is going to fill the whole container right here. You can do custom. So usually you're going to want to use like a percentage. So if you wanted to have it where it's smaller than the width of the widget, you can do that right here as well. And you can see you can scale it up, you know, whatever your use case is going to be. But if you want to show the whole word in this example, just go to fit. That's going to fit it all the way up to the edge of that widget. And then you can repeat it. This is more for how you want to align it within the widget. So you can see you can do top, you can do the bottom. Um, but I would say in probably most cases, you're going to want to just keep it at the center center. And then you can do repeat, no repeat. So. I don't know, or use case where you would need multiple uh, versions of the text like this. So you could just click no repeat. Let's go ahead, just hit update, make sure everything's still working correctly. Yep, that works. And the user can still go ahead and click on and off right here. Now let's go ahead and add a self-hosted video so you can see what settings you have there. So I have this one right here where it's just a sailboat sailing down with the ocean. and. Let's go ahead, let's say we don't want to have that start at 20. Auto play is on, mute, player controls off, and let's hit update. Let's go ahead and test it and see if the user can click on and off, like in the YouTube video. So I'm clicking around, and it looks like if you have a self-hosted video, um, it doesn't have that feature where the user can click on the video and have it stop. Now I'm going to show you how I was able to pull this effect off right here where we have a fish flying across the screen as a video mask. Let me go ahead in here and remove this video widget. 
and show you how exactly how I was able to build that. So just like the first one, you just type in video, pull in a video widget, to pull that in. We have our YouTube link right here. So it's the same video you can see. Um, what I did in this section is I wanted the fish to kind of fly further across the screen. So you could see right here, container width, I changed that to full width. That way it's gonna take up more of the container. So let's go back into that video widget. And just like the other one, let's have it start around 20 seconds. Autoplay, gonna wanna make sure that's on mute. Turn off the player controls. And now let's head over into the mask. So go under advance, mask, turn that on. Under shape, we do custom again, choose the image. So in this case, I wanted to have this fish right here. Click insert, and you can see it's just like the first one. Um, where it's static. So in order to move this fish around, we need to go right under here where it says motion effects. Click the scrolling effects on. And then what we can do is change the vertical scroll, horizontal scroll, and maybe add a little rotate. So if you haven't used these settings before, there's a lot of good videos out there on how to set this stuff up. But let's go ahead and just do a quick example. So let's have it where it goes down. So if you look right here, it's going to have like this parallax effect. But let's go ahead and make it where it doesn't fill up the whole thing. Maybe go to like six. So it looks like he's kind of floating down. Now we can go to horizontal scroll. This is where he's going to show some movement to the left and right. So you can see right here, he's kind of going left and right. Let's have him go to the right. So he's always swimming to the right. And then same thing here, you can kind of change when this viewport happens. This is the viewport and this is when the effect comes into play. So you can see right here, if you change it to like 20 and 80%, that means that when the user scrolls down about 20% of the page, you can see right here, it's gonna kick on like right around here. It's gonna start to swim and then it will slow down around 80% of the viewport. So right around there, he kind of stops. So what I recommend, just play around with these settings. It's a little confusing at first when you start to use this stuff. But if you start to play around with the speed and the viewport, you're going to see more movement. And one thing I do recommend is click this button right here. This will collapse the Elementor um, settings so you can see how it's actually going to look on the website. So you can have it where he kind of starts from the top, scrolls down, and swims that way. Kind of, He's kind of going down and to the right. So let's go ahead and maybe have that vertical scroll, not nearly as much, so it kind of stays in the middle. So you can see he doesn't kind of scroll down as much. And let's add a little rotate. Um, I do recommend not adding too much rotate because he might look a little weird if he rotates too much. See right there? So he's kind of like rotating and swimming down. So let's go ahead have it where that rotate isn't so extreme so we can change it where it doesn't really kick on until there. Have him go to the right. Let's see if that looks good. So if you want him to kind of go downward, you can do it like that. Left would do the opposite. So you can see right here, he's kind of going more upward now. And then if you ever need to change the anchor points, right now, every time that you do something, the anchor point for that object is right here in the middle. So if you want to have it where the anchors are always on the top and the left, you can change that right here. So now whenever you pivot things, it will kind of go like up here, start here and kind of pivot around. So you can see it's going to look a little bit different. Swimming up, but I don't know. Just keep that in the middle for now and see what happens. That looks good. Let's have him go a little bit more uh, to the right so we can go here. Have it where it goes. So you, I want more movement left and right than anything else. So if you start to scroll down the screen, so you can see right here, here kick on right here. So you, you can see that he's moving right here. That's a pretty big fish. Now let's go ahead and say you don't want the fish to be that big. You can easily change that in the mask settings. So if we go under mask, and if you go under size instead of fit, we can go to custom. And just like in the first example, you can actually change the size of your mask. So in this case, so if you go to like 100% or 200%, you're going to see it's going to scale up. And that's not going to look very good. So if I go here and start to scroll, 
Um, unless you really want to have a, a fish that big or anything along those lines, you can scale that back down. So let's go back down to something below 100%. Let's go to, I kind of want to have a smaller fish. So around 40% or so. Let's type in 40. Collapse this and let's kind of just do a little scroll test. So if you start to scroll, you can see some movement here. And yeah, I would say that looks a little bit better. And so you can also change the position of where he's at. So if you want him to always be on the bottom, bottom center, so he's always kind of floating toward the bottom, you can do that right here. Or if you want him toward the top, you can do top center. So you can see right here. So you can see that the top is right here. The center center would be right here and bottoms down here. This is one of those things that you're going to have to just kind of play around with your positioning and how big you want things to kind of fit it into the website. There isn't just a generic way to do this type of stuff. Um, it's a lot of just kind of trial and error and just kind of playing around. Let's go ahead, hit update, make sure everything works on the front end of the website. And you can see right here, the ocean is loading up and the user can click on that. And then we have our fish at 40% kind of going down and rotating a little bit. So he's swimming and the user can click on this as well and kind of turn it on and off. Well, that's interesting. I guess if you double click, you can pull it up. Yeah, that was a double click and I was able to pull up the video. So if you don't want that type of functionality, um, it looks like you're gonna have to go to a self-hosted video. And the one thing I do recommend if you do have a self-hosted video, keep it small. Make sure that it's not massive because what's happening is now you're making the user download that whole video. Whereas when you have a YouTube video like this, uh, it's a little bit better for performance reasons because the user doesn't have to download the whole video. And YouTube has you know CDNs all over the world, so it's a lot faster than self-hosted would be. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.